welcome to the very first meeting of the After School Anime Club. I'm your host, Max Newland, and with me today are my co-hosts and chapter co-presidents, Max Kostrak. <clears throat> yes, hello. And Stevie Matos. Hello, hi. Uh, how are you all doing today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's I'm wonderful. I'm ready to talk about anime. I'm very ready to talk about anime. I'm very hyped. <laughs> well, I think you come to the right place. You know, and that is what we do here is we talk about anime. But before we get into that, uh, I wanted to uh, center our discussion. We've watched the first two episodes of Tenchi Muyo. Uh, known, well, what's known in the United States is Tenchi Muyo, simply, with an exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. uh, but they call it in Japan Tenchi Muyo Ryo Oki, the first two episodes of the first OVA. To get us started, I have come up with a game for you all. So ready? Oh, we're coming right out the gate. I'm, with so, the game. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Let's go. I'm going to fail. But I'm a really good <laughs> test taker, so maybe I'm going to pass. It's time to play No Need for Trivia. Let's go. Okay, I, I think I know where this is going. I, I'm so ready. The title of the show, Tenchi Muyo. Max, you're a Japanese speaker, so some of what I'm going to say is, is probably going to be familiar to you. The phrase Tenchi Muyo um, colloquially is somewhat similar to this side up in that it means don't flip over. Mm -hmm. The Muyo can also be read as no need for X, modifying whatever came before. That's it, useless. Yes, useless. Tenchi is useless, is the is the name of the TV show. <laughs> Could also be the whole universe is useless, because Tenchi is heaven and earth, which means the whole universe. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Later on, the episode names all take the form of no need for X. So that's where the inspiration for this trivia game came from. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start by asking you two trivia questions, and, uh, you know, just give me your best guess, and whoever didn't get asked... If the person I do ask gets it wrong or passes, then you can you can steal. So okay, it's a pretty we're, simple no, trivia. Taking game. turns, okay. Got it. Cool. Uh, to decide who goes first, which of the two of you most recently watched anime that was not prescribed for this program? Uh, this morning. Oh well, then it's Max because oh, yeah, it's Max Kostrak. It okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you're ready to learn something because it's time for no need for trivia. Question one. Whew. Series creator Masaki Kajishima and director Hiroki Hayashi credit this 1965 American sitcom starring Barbara Eden and Larry Hagmore as the inspiration for the relationship between Tenchi and Ryoko. What? Um, I'm going to take a... <laughs> God, I have no idea. I'm going to take a stab in the dark with just a name that I know and say, like, The Odd Couple? Oh, it's not the odd couple. The uh, odd couple oh. famously is about two male roommates. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> one who is very clean and one who is not. How about you, Stevie? What do you think? Oh, do you need God. to hear the question again? No. Is it the is it the 60s sitcom about the husband and wife who hate each other, which isn't helpful because this is no, American sitcom? No, it's, it's sitcoms? not. It's actually not. I'll give you that hint. It's um, It, it had oh. a kind of a theme. There was a... Uh, a film starring Will Ferrell that released in the mid 2000s that was an adaptation of this sitcom. In the 2000s, an adaptation of this sitcom? Yes. Will Bewitched? No, not Bewitched. Not Bewitched. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Future Max Newland emerging from the shadows of the edit to hand myself the L. Uh, Bewitched is, in fact, the correct answer to that clue. It's not the correct answer to the question, so really it's on me for having a bad clue. I don't know why I thought Will Ferrell's Bewitched was actually a remake of a different show, which you'll find out the answer to in a moment, but I guess I got mixed up and then I led these guys on a whole thing, but then it turned into kind of a funny joke later on, so I don't know. I left that part in and uh, stubbornly. Anyway, thank you very much. Very sorry. The episode continues. <laughs> We're getting, we're getting closer, weirdly enough. It's not, it's not, no, Will Ferrell wasn't in Cheaper by the Desert, and that was always a movie. That was Steve mm. Martin. That was Steve Martin. But good, good guess. He was not, he has nothing to do with Tenchi Muyo. A sitcom, and it's not the way to, like, get my hands on you, Alice. It's not that guy. No, because they don't no. actually fight each other. They don't really fight each other like that. Well. They do, but they don't. 
She's never like going to punch don't. her to the moon, you know. She's going to punch just getting lasers the fired at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need I need an answer, Stevie. What I don't do you know. Think? I don't our... know the Brady punch. <laughs> the answer was I dream of genie. Oh, sh- oh shit. I forgot I about that. I dream of genie. Wait, Will Ferrell was it? Hold on. What? Really? Yes, Will Ferrell was in a yeah, they make so many movies, you guys. Do you ever think about how many movies they make? They yeah. make so There's many. There's too many. Movies. Yeah. Remember Sausage Party? And then, like, what? remember both of the Sonics? How quickly two. they came out? <laughs> Question two. This one's for you, Stevie. Oh, God. Before it became famous for its all anime lineup, Cartoon Network's Toonami block featured primarily classic American cartoons from the Hanna Barbera catalog. Can you name one of these cartoons? The Jetsons. I'm sorry, the Jetsons was what? not on what? Toonami. The, the Jetsons. Oh, was it the? No, really. The, the Jetsons, Jetsons was not on Toonami, unfortunately. The. F- oh wow. Well, go. Costrac, do you go, have Kostrak. a? Do you have any insight mm, here? Um, I'm just gonna go completely left field. Wacky Racers. <gasps> That's two swings and two misses. Uh, wow. No. We would have been able to pick from the Herculoids, oh. Birdman, or Johnny Quest. I would have also accepted oh. Thundercats. Not not Hanna-Barbera, but I would have accepted it. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I remember that Completely now. Completely different. Okay. Wow, yeah. We're not doing great, Stevie. Oh, no. I feel like <laughs> this, is, this is a pattern I told now. you that I was not going to study <laughs> I'm diligently keeping track of the score as well. So you really I hope better I be... don't get demoted out of the anime club. <laughs> uh, well, it may all come down to this. Question number three. This is for you, Kostrak. Before it aired on Toonami, there was only one place for American viewers to watch Tenchi Muyo. A local PBS affiliate called KTEH. Can you tell me what state hosted KTEH's broadcast? Was it Virginia? <laughs> Sorry, it's not Virginia. <laughs> I had a one in 50. <laughs> one in 50. <laughs> well, now I have a one in 49 because I know it's not Virginia. Um, is it California? It is California. Hey! You've earned our first no! point. Hey! <laughs> yes, indeed. It was, a, it was a California San Jose PBS affiliate that aired Tenchi Muyo for the first time in the United yes. States. I I claim Sergeant at Arms. Let's go. <laughs> uh, first, uh, fourth question for you, Stevie. In the opening of the first episode, Tenchi breaks into his family shrine's honden after stealing his grandfather's key. The honden is traditionally the most sacred place in a Shinto shrine. What is the honden's purpose? That's to cost <laughs> You're passing. I'm passing because I don't know You're that much Japanese. Questions. Okay, what do you what do, what do you think, Max? Here's the problem: I I only know some of the language. No! Um, <laughs> okay, um, here's a hint. What was what, uh, what was Grandpa using it for? <laughs> do you remember? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm thinking as well. Oh, no. What was in that shrine? Well, it was in that a, cave. It was a relic. It was a stone that mm-hmm. held that held Ryoko. It was a mm-hmm. it was a tomb. A tomb. You know what? We'll go, we'll give you tomb because it's the ho- the purpose of a hone den is to hold hold objects of great significance. Oh, okay. Um, pub- oh, is that what that little box is for? I've seen that yes. in 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 media here and there. That may- okay. Got well, it. sometimes sometimes the hone den is a building usually that that's where you put all the relics and stuff. But okay, okay. so like not quite a sepulcher, but like a sepulcher. Yeah, that's a great way of thinking of it. Got it. Okay. Okay. I forget who. I think Max, you're next. Yes, Max. Yes, we're on the odd number question. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Tenshi Muyo Ryo Oki, the series we're watching right now, was released as a six episode OAV. What is an OAV? Uh, so, an OAV is uh, essentially an anime or an animation series that is released direct to consumer, uh, not syndicated on television, correct? That's, that's exactly correct. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yes, I got Come one. Come on, let's go. Kids in Japan in 1992 would have just gotten a VHS with these six episodes on it and no additional context, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, you just pick these up at the store. A lot of like mail by order, right? Like order, ma- like I'm going to write in and get VHS mailed to my house. Yes. <laughs> wow. This was, that was like such a thing. I burst up laughing during that. <laughs> that was like a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, this is the final question, Stevie. Oh, God. Um, this one I put in here pretty much as a vanity thing because I just wanted to talk about this person. Patria Celeste Burchard, who plays Ryoko in most of her appearances in the Tenchi franchise, is also an accomplished actor of stage and screen, as well as a published novelist. Mm. I mostly just wanted to share all that because the real question is this. She also appeared as an extra in an episode of this 2005 American sitcom starring Josh Radner. Josh? Who is that? Uh, Here's the hint. I picked him because if I had used anyone else's name from this sitcom, you would have recognized them. A sitcom. Okay. 2005 American sitcom starring Josh Radnor and a bunch of other famous people. Post writer's strike. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's not, it's not 30 Rock? No. Oh, it's not 30 Rock. Oh, no. I don't know. Uh, Kostrak, do you have a, uh, do you have a guess? I have no idea. <laughs> Sitcom 2005. Bye. Well, that's a bit strange because we watched a whole lot of it when we were living together at one no, point. No, is neither it? Neither of us is proud of the fact that it's how I met your mother right you now. You know what? I have never seen <sighs> that. <laughs> I've fine. never you seen that You don't have to. Oh, you no. Really don't what? Have to. Not required viewing. I've just, I've just realized I've missed that. I missed that completely. That's fine. You know what's better? You know what's a better TV show? Hmm. Tenchi Muyo. It is. Well, okay. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> I agree with you. It just, it did take me a second <laughs> after these first two episodes. <laughs> I think that's what makes it better, honestly. Before we start talking our way through the episodes, I just want to do a quick summary for the viewers at home. In case you didn't watch through with us, here is what we watched. So, in episode one, Tenchi is an ordinary teen boy living with his father and grandfather at a Shinto shrine kept by his family in rural Japan. One day, Tenchi sneaks into the sealed cave behind the shrine where he finds and breaks a rusty old piece of junk, awakens a demon that was sealed inside several hundred years ago by his ancestor, Yosho. After falling asleep on the roof of his school, he's confronted by the demon from the cave, now in the form of a mysterious woman in search of revenge. After giving her the slip with the oldest trick in the book, Tenchi defeats her with his magic sword, only to find her asleep in his bed at home. Episode 2 opens on the bridge of a ship, where we learn that Ryoko is a wanted criminal until five seconds from now, pursued by Ayaka, the princess of Jirai. Tenchi and Ryoko are unable to evade capture even with the assistance of the living battleship Ryo Oki. With Ryoko held captive, we learn that Tenchi's ancestor Yosho is Ayaka's half-brother and fiancé. Turns out royalty is fucked up even on other planets. On a mission from Ayaka's sister Sasami, Tenchi breaks into Ayaka's room and notices she has his sword, which he attempts to reclaim. She awakens in a compromising position and sends Azaka and Kamidake to kill him. However, sword in hand, Tenchi is able to control the ship and secure both his and Ryoko's freedom. Not satisfied with escape, Ryoko crashes both ships into the earth and severely disrupts the local infrastructure. It turns out everyone is okay, except the people who died on the bridge, and is uh, and living in an uneasy peace now at the newly relocated Masaki family home. Perfectly done. Just- what, what a wonderful and succinct summary truly Thank you. truly gold stars gold stars for that summary it's very good can, can i kick off the discussion or are we are uh, can we talk first about about genre here because i i, I mean we start out it is very traditional japan we've got the shrine we've got the the garb everything is there and it, it does not take us long to shift hard into sci-fi yeah with these wild living ships aliens and pirate you know, uh, it, it's rad. I love it. Um, how revolutionary was this at the time? Um, this was happening. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because this, the place that the OVA holds in the, the Tenchi franchise is kind of, this is like kind of a source book for Tenchi. Oh, basically. Okay. 
um, mm-hmm. is, is how I look at it. This is like a, the first sketch of a bunch of different ideas, some of which are real winners that continue to generate hit after hit. And some are like, you know, mostly forgettable, like stuff is happening in space and there's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a place called Jirai and there's stuff going on there. I couldn't tell you, I've seen a, pretty much every piece of Tenchi media. Couldn't tell you much about Jirai. <laughs> That's another interesting point here is, huh. is uh, Max Newland, you have seen a lot of Tenchi and you know a lot of Tenchi. I love Tenchi. And Stevie and I, we're both completely new to this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I actually have some questions for you guys, considering that perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so for, this is the big one. Uh, uh, a harem anime needs a central figure. What do we think of Tenchi? <laughs> That's my answer. Nothing. He is. You think uh, nothing? What, what, okay. <laughs> what is he? He is. He, I mean, I think the dub adds a lot to him. Yes. Um, in this case, uh, because what a voice. Um, but I, he does feel. I mean, and this is this is harem anime, right? Yeah. Like he's very generic. Yes. At least at what I've seen of him so far. So this is 1992, which actually puts it fairly early in the history of what we would call a harem anime so this is kind of a tone setter for shows like love Mm. hina and some of the other shows that are a little bit more embarrassing um so we can point the blame yeah tenchi that actually that makes me that makes me interested and like watching a couple of episodes of love hina to see like the 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 conventions that were taken from tenchi muyo and implemented into like this anime because i actually don't have a big understanding or familiarity with harem anime specifically yeah. um gundams peer for it any sort of robot i got you <laughs> yeah Gun- gundams all day tension is actually kind of divergent from the from the genre l- largely in that um literally usually with these kinds of shows the main the bland main character will meet five or six women who all want to become his wife that's not necessarily true for tenchi we yeah. have met the two that that care about that and the rest of the characters that we meet are just some cool characters to cool. hang out with oh really okay oh, cool. that's yeah. a pleasant surprise cool. it's yeah. actually mostly just a love triangle but then there was but again like i said this ova is like the the tone setter the source book for the mm. material gotcha. after this um there's a lot of embellishment in in every direction mm-hmm. okay i personally think tenchi is Tenchi is a true teenager, even especially yes. with the dub, like especially with the dubbed voice actor. <laughs> yes. I wanted to mention that like the the bullshitting between him and his friend when he <laughs> actually gets back to school is like so real teenage boys bullshitting with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like the- that is a great point. I did not think about that scene enough. That, uh, wow. It's I, cute too. Like they, I ooh, feel like this is a relationship. Da, 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 da. It's just a really, yeah. And it's like, there's, I just like the summer, the summer vacation small talk. I found it very, very yes. funny. And it was just very much like this whole, like this posturing that teenage boys like absolutely do. And it was just really funny to, to, to see how that kind of, how that conversation carried through the rest of that episode, especially when Ryoko was awake and, and she was like, well, there's a girl here. I guess I should figure out if she wants to date me or not. And you're like, yeah. Tenchi, how old are you? Yes. <laughs> like, he's really showing his age when he's like, this woman who's chasing me is kind of attractive. <laughs> right. I guess she's hot. Uh, I guess I'll stick around. Can I just know? say if Sigmund Freud were alive in September 25th, 1992, when this came out, he would have been blasting rails off the back of his Tenchi Muyo VHS cassette and trying to show it to everybody. Yes. You think so? You, you find, you're finding a lot of Freudian oh imagery. He, he goes into a forbidden cave, forbidden. steals okay. a magic sword. Oh yeah, the sword. I will admit, very fat. And then awakens a yeah. superpowered woman who wants to both love him and kill him. Mm, yeah, it's very, it's very strong. Step on me, mommy vibes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mommy, sorry, it's a lot of that. So okay, so what do we think of Ryoko then? This is the this is like the main thing. Everyone, she is the most. I don't mind telling you this. She's the most popular character. In the series. There's no surprise. Yeah, of there course, because she's because she's so she's so jazzy. Like she's got like she's got the personality. She's like this badass 100%. like woman. She's like I'm gonna blow shit up. I can do whatever. But she's also like 
girly and innocent and also really fun. Like my favorite moment was when Tenchi got her with the oldest trick in the book. And then she got mad yes. that she got got like it makes her endearing, <laughs> you know, but yes. she also will rip your face off, which is also really cool. I feel like Ryoko <laughs> takes the situation like. Well, and the whole show in general kind of follows this tone where it like it takes everything as seriously as it needs to for it to not fall apart. But we're we're still winking kind of at the yes. audience. Yes. The melodrama is great. And I'm I'm truly here for it. Brilliant melodrama in this show. <laughs> we're not there yet. But when we get there, there's there's episode two has a lot of melodrama. And it's it's my favorite. It's my favorite. So, yeah, he he stumbles into the shrine and he awakens this ancient demon. And later she destroys his entire school. I I mean, I hope you weren't looking forward to like school hijinks because the school is destroyed. Okay. And (laughs) I want to make this point clear. Is the school destroyed forever? Like he does. He never goes back to school. Yes. (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. Seriously. He's like, he's just done with school. That's not how that works. You don't get to just stop going to school if it blows up. You become truant when your school blows up or you go somewhere else. What is Here's the thing. You don't get to stop going to school when your school blows up. You might get to stop going to school if a spaceship puts your whole house on top of a mountain instead of where it used to be. Okay, yeah. That's that's a good point, Max. What prefecture is this? I need answers. So it's supposed to be based on Okayama because that's where... Um, Got it. Okay, that makes um, what's sense. What's his name grew up? Yes. I have questions. <laughs> questions about the education of students in Okiyama Prefecture. Yeah, maybe he's probably getting a better education than Tenchi. Daily. On the regular. Yeah. I would hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, um, yeah, no, I guess she's a girl. I guess I could just see what she's about, I guess. Jeez. While getting basically lasers shot at him. Yes. By what he perceives to be a demon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like the reality of the situation is wild. There's a line he drops while he is hiding from Ryoko in the school in one of the classrooms. And I, I think it's maybe when he notices that the gas is going or, He's or, like, or something. Oh, it smells like rotten eggs. He goes, oh, the gas is on. <laughs> he does nothing about it. Does nothing about it. He does nothing about it. But he, I think my favorite line for this episode, he goes, I guess it's just one of those kind of days. I'm like, <laughs> is it? <laughs> is that is that normal for you? Well, you know, I think Tenshi's going to run into a number of uh, one of these kinds of days. Something tells me he's got a lot of these. So this is uh, his new life, essentially. Yeah, is now I uh, I was going to school. Now my school is blown up and I have a lot of aliens yes. to deal with. So many alien at my <laughs> so shrine. So many alien girls to deal with at my shrine. You know, teen, hashtag teenager things. <laughs> uh, something you might notice is that this is like a really good looking TV show. Because of the fact that it was not actually made for TV, they could like, you know, paint the backgrounds mm-hmm. and do really cool animation on Ryoko coming through walls. And uh, they commissioned an incredible score. I don't know about you guys. Yes. I'm loving the music the, in this. The music's mm, great. Yes, 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 yes. Like just such, such vibes. Wonderful nostalgia. Incredible like it's, vibes. It's very, it's very epic. And it's really fun. I love it. Yeah. Ryoko's theme is my uh, cell phone ringtone. As right well, now, it should be. Because it's very fun and bouncy. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the ending theme also absolutely kicked my ass as a kid. It's like very 90s, very authentically like it has that kind of um, Japanese city pop music feel to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels rooted in a location and time period. Yes. I think you've yes. got it exactly right. Yes. Like, it takes me there. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I remember from my childhood, because I whatever came after Tenchi Muyo, I would actually listen to the end. I would I, I would tune in early, right, to not miss the opener for whatever was next for oh, Tenchi. Oh, of course. Absolutely. So I definitely was like, oh, I remember this ending theme, but I, yeah. Same. Yeah, I remember the ending theme. Exact same situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. So... Uh, in episode two, episode one is this kind of like, so he, yeah, he gets chased by this demon. They have this fight. Oh, uh, the sword seems to fight by itself. Hmm. Yes, I like that. Also, and this is second episode stuff, but I assume we're jumping around. Hit, the sword is also called Tenchi. Is that right? Yes. The sword That's is also true, called yes. Tenchi. Yeah. The sword is called Tenchi. Ah. He's called Tenchi. They are not the same. It's not like a, he is the sword or projection of the sword or anything like that. Okay. But there's some stuff going on there. Um, and we also learn in this first episode that Ryoko's power, whatever power she has, is, re- is like related to these three jewels that she has. Which she initially refers to as balls. 
<laughs> yeah, she so yeah. does. She's great super gag. Dead. Which I get it. I a hundred percent a gag, but it's just <laughs> <laughs> they really, by the way, they've really got a lot of play out of that clip on the Toonami promos. <laughs> Did they? Uh, I think I remember oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Now I want your balls, please. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. They did cut Tenchi's reaction so they could like plausibly say, well, she's not really talking about balls. But, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> they cut a lot out of this. They cut a lot out of episode two. They, they, you know, they got a TV show that was extremely horny and they wanted it to be for 13 year olds. So correct. They they did they did some cutting. Uh, in episode two, opens uh, the joke at the opening of episode two is one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. Ayaka's on her ship and she's like scanning the planet, and they say, "Oh, uh, extremely wanted criminal Ryoko is here," <laughs> and she's like, "All right, well, let's go get her." And then they tell her that the uh, statute of limitations is expiring in literally five seconds. Yes. <laughs> so my so my favorite thing about that whole bit is actually not just the statute of limitations expiring in five seconds. It's the thing right after where she tries to ask for the same thing, but differently. And it gives her the same answer. And I was like, yes. how was this an eternal joke? Like with the way that technology, like, you know, manifested over 30, almost literally 30 years of time for it to be like, for it to be like the, the computer, essentially the spaceship repeated back to her the last response it gave. And it was like, this is some <laughs> Google home shit. And I cannot believe uh-huh. that y'all predicted this. You smart bitches. <laughs> if if Google Home had Azaka and Kamidake's voices, that would be much better. Honestly, I would change them in a heart. Internet, make that. it so. I uh, I really like how one of these guys is like New Jersey style voice. <laughs> the lack of consistency between accents is phenomenal. Which which guy was this? <laughs> the um, you know the the her two robot guys, Azaka and Kamidake. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> one of them talks like this. Yeah. <laughs> Also, it goes, it went over my head completely, all of this technical shit about how Earth is like a vassal to Jirai somehow. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, I don't, I still don't understand. Yeah, I'm confused. What's happening. They colonized us, apparently. That's, that is. But we, we're not aware of it, oh, which is not no. typically how that goes. Okay, but that's actually kind of cool. I like, I don't, I don't hate that convention because it explains why they're humanoid. Yes, and uh, mm. it, the roots go deep on this one. They did. A, they thought of a lot of stuff. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I do like from what I you mentioning it that I like that how they were like this explains why you know that that's helpful because it's like well why would these aliens be aliens if they look like people like you know kind of thing. It also explains mm. how they're able to move through the world, which I think is pretty cool. Indeed. I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. And who doesn't love a, a spaceship made out of a big tree? Yeah. It's extremely cool. It is very I cool. It's that. tree punk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, first impressions on Ayaka is is what I would like to hear. Oh boy, her voice mm. actor. Oh boy. Oh boy, that voice type. Oh boy, that yeah. voice type. Mm-hmm. Oh, also British. Also like kind of British. And I'm like, okay, but you but you got this New Jersey robot. I mean, hey, you know, diversity. Princess with a New Jersey robot. Yeah, <laughs> diversity is key. You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you need a As a young guy. lad, I was ride or die for Ryoko, so I I was kind of like I right now am ride or die for Ryoko, so I'm with you on that. Like yeah, if I, I had to really like stake a claim right now, yeah. You know who I am for? Not I mean I am I'm pretty I'm pretty ride or die for Ryoko. I'm seeing I'm seeing the waifu meter go towards Ryoko, but the person I'm here for <laughs> is actually not either one of them, but the littlest one who we haven't talked Sasami? about. Yet, Sasami. I actually really like Sasami. Sasami's great. Sasami's had a bit. very cool ferret. Yes! Sasami kicks ass. Sasami's like, bitching. Okay, Sasami. also, can we talk, let, let's talk about Sasami for a minute. Like, Oh, sure. This let's go for it. prank, or what What does she put Tenchi <laughs> no, to? Tries to get Tenchi She's like, go get this headdress. I just want to piss my sister off. Take her fucking headdress from yeah, her. Yeah, is he just trying... <laughs> She's just trying to create kind of a Porky's situation. <laughs> mm, yeah. 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 She just really wants some hijinks to happen. We already had the femdom fetish. So now we got to satisfy the uh, like stepsister <laughs> crowd. <laughs> They're checking off boxes the way yeah. that they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, so uh, <laughs> I just want to check d- quick exposition check on you guys. Did you hear? Do you remember about uh, Ayaka's? search why she's coming to earth yes so that's the melodrama i was talking about because we get more expansion on that when she's dreaming oh my god also the the hologram she watches of her brother husband (laughs) 
Um, Brother, that's, that's a horrible turn. Um, Strong, I physically like yeah. convulsed. It, it'd be like that. Um, but it, like, she's watching this hologram, um, and I, I, ha- I was so curious about this. I had to look it up. It is the same voice actor as Tenchi, and it is. Yeah. I think it's the worst voice acting. Is this like five second clip of this hologram? You can hear him like. Like snapping his lips a little bit <laughs> in between lines. <laughs> well, see, okay, I, I, I feel like I want to touch on the dub because it's so incredible. We've like, we've yeah, let's talk generally cool the about the dub. Is. Yeah, this was dubbed into English at a time before Funimation, Crunchyroll. Um, this it wasn't was like an industry yet. Yeah, it was no. like a yeah, yeah. It was this little you know. We've got a tiny office building, maybe. Right. We have like two recording studios. We could probably get some guys in. Like, like I mentioned that Patria Burchard, who plays Ryoko, is was from the world of stage acting. Mm-hmm. A lot mm-hmm. of people in this dub script were either stage actors or they were in radio drama. Like they they were. Th- this was before there was like a gigantic like operation of. Yeah, not a lot of other credits. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like these days, if you go into IMDb or whatever website you go on to and look up an anime voice actor, it's like, oh, they were also 12 right. other characters that I know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. <laughs> no, that that is not this. Yeah, like while there was a voiceover market for like American com- cartoons, there was not one for anime. Like people weren't dubbing mm-hmm. it and like doing the translating and like the actual this is the bleeding edge stuff. yeah it was the whole thing it was just which is wild continue because i have a whole thing about that too specifically so the cool thing to me about listening to tenchi muyo is that i don't want to disparage the people that do anime dubs not only because i someday i would like that to be my career but also because just generally this is an incredibly difficult job but there is an anime dub voice and, I, and you guys probably both know what I'm talking about when I yes. say anime yes. dub voice. Like, like there is a way of speaking that has become, it's, it's almost like how in the, in like the forties and fifties, there was that transatlantic accent that all the movie <laughs> actors did. Yes. It's like that, but the, but for anime dubbing and that for, for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to have existed when Tenchi Muyo dub was being recorded. Mm-hmm. Like you can kind of see it little bits of it in Ieka. But for the most part, like, I've never heard a dub that sounds like Patria Burchard's Ryoko. And Matt Miller, who provides the voice for Tenchi, he sounds so much different in this OVA than he sounds in any... He went on to do lots of anime and video games. He doesn't sound like this ever again. Huh. That's so strange. That's interesting. I know. It, I, I, I wonder I don't know where... We, we have to track down this influence. Where did dub voice come from? You know, the funny thing is, as we progress through anime series in this very podcast, we may see it develop. Yeah, de- yeah, depending on how far back we go, right? Like, depending on how far back we go when it comes to, like, uh, things that either, like, that aired with dubs or got dubs, like, that came over to the U.S., we might we might catch it. Because when you said I'm that, sure. yeah, when you said anime voice, I'm like thinking of the things that we, like that I would see on Toonami and Adult Swim. And at the time it was Tenchi, it was Sailor Moon, it was Gundam Wing, it was, and then Adult Swim was just like Bebop and Trigun. And mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Big O was like that new generation of like animation Fuck style, you know? show was so good. It was really cool. And then, but then like, that's kind of when the voice, like I think Bebop kind of started to set that standard. And for me, in my in my mind, hmm. it was like Bebop and Trigun, um, and then that voice kind of because those those same actors started doing, you know, they they kind of got these heavy hitters to constantly do dubs, and then you absolutely like you heard mm-hmm. the guy, I can't remember his name. One of y'all will know it off the top of your head. Newland, I know you're gonna know it. The guy who's the voice of probably Spike. Steve Bloom. Steve Bloom. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, Bloom. Steve Bloom. You yep. heard him everywhere, you know. And then everybody's not trying to talk like Steve Bloom, but they're trying to enunciate like Steve. For sure. And it's exactly it totally, he, he figured yeah. out a way to do the presentation that sounded natural. Yeah. And hit the character mm-hmm. and was understandable. Mm-hmm. You're in dubs, but I'm yeah, absolutely. And it's not to knock it. I mean, I actually kind of like that it's no. different. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. in, in But in you know way. what you're watching, right? Yeah. Like anytime you hear anime in the background, you know it's anime. Yep. Absolutely. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah um, I can clock I can clock anime from a hundred <laughs> yards away. You better believe it. I'm just that sensitive. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
Do you guys remember the, this is like describing a JPEG, but do you remember the uh, Casey Green cartoon where it's the guy, the, the like barbarian guys in there in their room and one of them is like, I am Thor, the big anime fan. I have all series subbed and dubbed for all tastes. I do remember this. <laughs> I felt that it is a part of my. This body show was is. like the reason I started watching anime and dubs and kept watching anime and dubs. I think really, this is like, yeah. it, was this your uh, oh, for dubs specifically? I think I was also like I was also pretty young when this premiered on Tsunami. I was nine years old, so um, one of your first. Yeah, yeah. Also nine years old. I don't know if that if I want to say that's too young to watch this, but boy, I think it might be. I think because and I'm I, the, what I'm detecting here, Max it. Newland, is maybe that Tenchi has shaped your life more than you thought. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I, and was I think aware. that's the conclusion we're gonna get to. <laughs> no. <laughs> it shaped my life about as much as I think it shaped my life, which is a lot. Uh, uh, so so yes, Sasami is here. She is also cool. Uh, what I one of the things that is neat about Sasami is that she is a child in a in she is the only child in the cast, and that is not like a millstone around her neck the way it usually is with these like ensemble cast type shows. Mm-hmm. Like usually there's one kid and they don't get to do anything, yeah. but that is not true for Sasami. She will she develops as a character in fun ways and. She already has some character. Yeah, they set her up really strong. Whereas, the, you know, where they do, even though it seems like this very awkward, like, kind of, like, insertion of Sasami, like, it's a kind of, in my personal opinion, from a storytelling perspective, it's it's a kind of awkward way that she gets introduced. But yeah. she, like, shows up and she's like, you want to play a game? And you're like, okay, Saw, what do you want to do, Sasami? And, you know? and she's like, go this get This is normal. Sleep. Puppet master, <laughs> normal. dark Sasami. And I mean, like, kind of, sort of, like, her game dark thing Sasami. is, like, this plot device to get Tenchi in a compromising position, um, you know, with... Uh, I want to say Asaka, and I know it's not her name. Uh, Ayeka. Ayeka. It's not Asaka, it's Ayeka. So that's like the whole point, oh. but I like how, like, even when he got in trouble, she's like, oh, yeah, I just wanted to essentially cause chaos. Neener. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> if that's your MO, you can stay. That's a wonderful character trait. Yeah, chaotic neutral, yes. There are not one, but two, and someone's probably going to correct me, two spinoff series in which Sasami stars as a magical girl. Oh! <gasps> What? what? I love a magical girl anime. Yeah. I'm going to find it. <laughs> yeah, there are two. I've never seen them. Uh, the one is called Magical Girl Pretty Sammy, and I forget the name of the other one, but there are two of them. And they, you know, it's the traditional magical girl stuff. Most of the other characters from Tenchi are not in. Well, they, they might, they come out and do bit parts and cameos and stuff, but it's all Sasami. Awesome. I love that. Mm. She's great. I love that. It's wonderful. She's wonderful. I love Sasami. So I stand Sasami the most, mostly because I am also a chaotic individual. So I just resonate with her. Kindred you're going to like this show. I, I think you're going to like this show. What do we think about uh, the, what do we make of the fact that Tenchi and the sword are like linked up with the ship somehow? I thought that the sword, oh wait, I thought that the jewels in the sword controlled the ship. Because isn't it that yeah, he, I don't has to give, it, he has to give Ryoko a jewel in order for her to control the cat ship? The jewels have power, and Ryoko's power is based on how many jewels she has inside her. Oh. Don't read that the wrong way. There's two in a list and one in the earring. That's, that's, that's all it is. <laughs> okay, I had to get it out. Thanks. I wasn't going to say it. You said jewel on purpose to keep mom. <laughs> <laughs> to keep us from being DJ. The jewels passed down from the uh, Jirai royal family. You might call the family jewels. <laughs> yeah, and we don't refer to them as balls. <laughs> They're not balls. No. Uh, and when they brought down the two ships, I was kind of, I don't remember watching this one. I have much stronger memories tied to the actual TV series they made of Tenshi Muyo. Cause they did in fact make a like broadcast television series, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. that is brilliant, uh, that I will force upon you all at some point. But th- I, I guess I didn't remember that Ryoko did fully crash these fucking ships into the earth. <laughs> And did I was expecting her to pull up at the end. I was expecting like it to be a faint and she's like, oh, you know, no. just nope. having fun. <laughs> she was like, she's going to destroy a bridge. Right. It's like, no, I'm just going to land. I mean, well, because it's the whole exchange, right? In the middle of the chaos. And she's like, well, you you can do whatever you want with this ship. I don't care. Can you put me back down on the ground? And Ryoko's like, uh, yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Careful what you wish for yeah. in my meowing spaceship. I just, okay, so wait, hold on. Here's the question. 
Is the meowing yeah. spaceship the ghost cat from episode one? Okay, I did have a question about the ghost cat. Is is they they heavily imply that the cat is Ryoko. Did you guys get that impression? Okay, that's, that's what, what I thought. I, I, I thought. was like, is it is it either the cat Ryoko and cats like and Ryoko is like kind of a witch and can like make herself into a cat. She like, appears with the bell, right? Yeah, she appears yes, with the bell, true. but the cat disappears. And so that cat weird. same cat was at the shrine before Tenchi went to school in the in the very first oh. episode. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, that's right. There is the cat. Okay. Because I was confused because the 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 ship meowed and I was very confused as to why the ship meowed. And I thought that maybe the ship was the cat. And I didn't I Well didn't remember know. the ship this is the living battleship Rio Oki. That is what how it is described. That's right. But I thought it was living in the sense of like a tree, like the other ship. Well, it, it's living in the it? sense Maybe. of being a cat. But it's a cat. It's a cat spaceship. So we're doing. I can say, I, I will say it's not a cat. My neighbor. Rio okay. Oki. But it does meow. It does meow. It's not a cat. And sometimes lots it's a of things meow that aren't cats. Like buses sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't mention this at all, but also I just remembered this incredible joke from episode two, which was Tenchi's dad hears some commotion yes. upstairs. <laughs> And he's like, no. hey, he's, he's about to go up to tell his son this to keep it down when he sees that his son has a girl in the room. Yes. And he's like, oh, OK, well, as his father, it's my duty to give him his privacy. <laughs> if I was if I was his mom, if I was his mom, I would just bust in there and see if he needed anything. <laughs> what the fuck? For specifically, I don't. I have no idea what this is. This might be a cultural thing. In the, um, I turned on the captions because I like to read the subtitles while I'm listening to the dub, so I can mm-hmm. see what's different. Uh, in the in the subtitles, he refers to his wife. If I if I were if I were his mother, I would bust in with some juice specifically. <laughs> what? I don't know why he thinks of offering juice. Um, <laughs> But then, yeah, he goes and uh, gets a ladder and videotapes the encounter. Okay, yeah, and he's got the like the yeah. big like SVHS recorder yeah. like on his shoulder, the big essentially. Boy. And I'm just like, it's what? incredible. He is uh, the, the dad is secretly recording what he believes, at, like in his own text, what he believes to be his son's first sexual encounter, <laughs> and while he's doing it, he's referencing constantly his dead wife. <laughs> <laughs> the line, oh, my dear wife in heaven. <laughs> yes, that's. <laughs> I mean, like, way to be sex, po- like, way to be sex positive, dad, I guess. Yeah, this is maybe a little too specifically supportive. <laughs> yeah, no. In a way that I don't want to go back and watch. No, I, I absolutely hated it. Um, <laughs> Like, I. <laughs> no, I hated no, it. No, let's be clear. This sucks. <laughs> it sucked real bad. And it was real weird. And I was like, ooh, this was the 90s. <laughs> Nobuyuki. Well, I just, I will warn you. Nobuyuki and Grandpa. That's Nobuyuki is dad. Yeah. Um, I forget Grandpa's name. Uh, dad and Grandpa do get a little bit of the, like, 90s anime trope pervy old man oh no uh, kind of stuff it's it is few and the far trope between nobody likes i suffered through seven deadly sins i can deal with it i guess Ugh, i'm not gonna like it <laughs> it's more it's heavier in the ovas than in the um than in the series tenchi universe mm-hmm. in the series tenchi universe there's actually like really sweet character development between uh dad and grandpa Okay. Um, where the dead wife is literally a joke in this episode. Um, but Tenchi's mother is actually like a, a big part of the series and the, the, the shadow she casts over everything is becomes quite important. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, so at the end of the second episode, real quick, Max, I just want to clarify. So the show about, um, these women sort of going after this one guy, there are also themes that are related to his mother. Just to tie us back yeah, to why Freud would, real quick. You know, just as you would expect. Cool. Uh, just double It all check comes it. back to mom. Got it. Okay. And at the end of the second episode, we're left with what is uh, kind of the like um, equilibrium that we're going to be returning to yeah. for like the rest of the series, which is, you know, now these aliens live in this house and that's going to just have to be normal. Yeah. And I don't have to go to school anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I don't have to go to school anymore. <laughs> so, hell yeah. <laughs> this is every kid's dream. Sick. Yeah. yeah, like, absolutely. I just, I actually. The ladies come to me. <laughs> my new alien girlfriend blew up school. Wow. I run a shrine with my hot <laughs> alien girlfriend. Like, pretty much. And I get a lightsaber, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Wait, the lightsaber yeah. fights were yeah. actually quite cool. Like the animation was oh, like, very cool, top notch. Like all okay. it was cool. The the dog fights. I'm glad you guys are into that. Dope. I just I like the action is actually really fun. It's super fun, and it's like it's really engaging despite the like hilarious. Like I don't even want to say bad because the dialogue's not bad. It's just hilarious, and I feel like it's very much like it's so campy. It's really campy, and I feel like it's. It's a product of its time, too, right? Because, you know, when we're thinking about what goes into a dub and, like, how many words you can fit and, like, sync up without it looking weird, you know? And so they were just... For sure. It's like, I feel as though we got better at that as time goes on. So it was really cool to see kind of where it started on the U.S. side because I was like, you could have put a lot more words here. And you didn't, especially in the first episode. There's just, like, a lot of silence. Yes. Um, I noticed that too. You see a lot of like lips moving after a line has ended. Yeah, where th- there is much better matching. Yeah, th- and and actually, I think they match a little too closely in that that middle period. Yeah, uh, where they they mm-hmm. start doing some weird stuff with the dub, but mm-hmm. uh, at least the timing gets better. Yeah, the timing this- gets better, and it's like it's this thing where it's like, oh, they don't want to like. I was like, oh, this is them trying to make sure that like they say enough words to get the plot across without like getting it completely out of sync, but they're kind of like, they're relying on the cuts where they're, where you don't see mouths move to, you know, Mm. to rocket a dialogue back and forth, which I thought was pretty cool to kind of see where that convention started and then like compare it to like anime of today to see kind of where they've ended up. You know, I like that. One point of comparison that I think is extremely flattering on Tenchi's part is that this is the only time I've watched an anime where the opening and ending theme songs have lyrical translation from Japanese to English that isn't uh, unlistenable. Yeah. yeah. I Usually when that happens, I am like physically reacting to it in a way that <laughs> yeah. makes me want to leave the room. Oh, like, like, uh, like, um, like brother fiance. What did you say? Brother husband? <laughs> brother husband. Brother, yeah, brother please, husband? Max. He, he's her fiance, actually. <laughs> Uh, you guys are gonna love the the first five minutes of the next episode. <laughs> it makes me oh, so boy. sick. I'm so sick. You don't even know how sick you're gonna be. There's a lot of sick shit in this TV show. I'm sorry, uh, but look, dude, what, and this is where we're starting, right? Like this yes, is this is the starting this is our position. Foundation. Two of what are ultimately the tamest episodes of Tenchi Muyo. If these are the tamest, I am legitimately a little worried for episode two. It can only go literally anywhere else from here. Uh, well, I, you know, for next time, what I think we're going to do, uh, this is a six episode OVA that has a bonus seventh episode. So like later prints of the VHS were released with an extra episode. Oh, no, wait, no, I'm getting that wrong. The, the six episode OVA was so popular that a special seventh episode was released like as a standalone Encore. VHS. Nice. Uh, so what I think we'd, what I think I'd like to do for the next episode of our show, next meeting of the After School Anime Club, is let's see if we can watch episodes three, four, and five, okay. mm. and then finish with six and seven. Sweet. After that, I think that's that. That'll make a very nice Tenchi Muyo sandwich. Yes, very much. <laughs> looking delicious. <laughs> looking so good. Tune in next time for the meat. Yeah, truly the meat of this whole thing. Oh my god. We, we've eaten our first slice of bread. We've had our vegetables. <laughs> Now it's time for the meat. Some a condiment or two, you know, you know, firm tomatoes yeah, yeah. sprinkled in between. <laughs> if if the girls of Tenshi Muya were condiments, what condiments would they be? I think Ryoko would be uh, uh, activated charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite sandwich <laughs> topping. What are we talking sandwich about? Sandwich topping. <laughs> I was really expecting a mustard, but you know, okay. Yeah, I was gonna go mustard. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was like a grainy mustard, maybe a grainy spicy no. mustard, possibly a Dijon. No, activated charcoal. Great. Activated charcoal. That's what I'm going with. Are you vegan? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the vegans out there. Um, I'm just an. I'm just a simple, a simple anime lover. Sus- Susami, I think, would be like avocado that's beginning to turn so you gotta use it real fast Mm. gotta get that right now yeah Mm. gotta get it right now sasami's like oh i'm good for now
That bell means this week's meeting of the After School Anime Club has come to a close. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you, and if you'd like to follow us online, you can at Anime Club Pod on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Max Newland underscore. Stevie, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, my handle on both of those is a smattering. It's such a good username. Thank you. And Costra? Uh Yeah, you can find me, I guess, if you want to. I'm on Twitter. It's at Max underscore attacks. Safety dog. I don't do anything. <laughs> um, but, you know, come say hi. Uh, since our show is so new, the best thing you can do to support us is leave a five-star review with a rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. And here's the deal. If you leave us a five-star review that's particularly funny or entertaining, I will read it on air. You can't use this to make me say things that are racist. I will yeah, not do that. It's, no. it's not a guarantee. No. There is no yeah. implied guarantee. No. If it is funny or entertaining, and definitely if it's not racist. Yes. You come in here saying chicken-headed shit. We're not reading it on air. No chicken-headed shit no from chicken-headed you. chicken-headed shit from you. <laughs> and again, we're so glad we got to spend this time with you. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you at the next meeting. After School Anime Club is a proud member of the Moonshot Network. Find more great shows like ours by following at Moonshot Pods on Twitter and Moonshot Network on Twitch. You can also support the work we do at patreon.com slash moonshotnetwork. 